Hello and welcome to our exterior lighting quick start video for V-Ray for SketchUp. In this video we'll go over lighting exterior scenes using V-Ray in SketchUp. Here we are in SketchUp Pro 2017 and we have the scene file QS2-ST loaded which you will find in the downloaded assets for this tutorial from the link shown below. As you can see, the light icons are located here in my UI. You can dock yours or keep them floating as you please. On the left, I have the asset editor already open and set to the lighting section where we can see sunlight, which is added by default to any V-Ray for SketchUp scene. Click over to the settings and turn on a material override, which will place a gray material on all the objects in the scene so that we can focus on and judge just the lighting of the scene. I'll also turn off the roof and facade layers to speed up my initial rendering. Now make sure you have V-Ray Interactive Rendering enabled in the Asset Editor and then start an interactive render with this icon. Now that we have an image, we can start adjusting the sun to change the time of day as well as the time of year. I'll set it to March sometime in the morning. Now click here to expand the Asset Editor to display settings for the sunlight. First option is the Sky Model, which changes how the sunlight looks through the atmosphere, such as an overcast day. Let's set it back to Hosek and play with the turbidity, which affects the haziness of the sky. I'll leave that at 3. The size multiplier changes the size of the sun, with lower numbers giving you sharp shadows and larger numbers giving you softer shadows. Set size multiplier to 15 and try changing the time of day to a late afternoon so we can add some lights to the interior. Stop the interactive render and move the VFB out of the way. Move your view so you can see better inside the building so we can place lights inside. Click the sphere light icon in the toolbar, and then click once inside the room, then drag to set the radius of the sphere light, and click to set it in place. When you make a light, it'll show up as a component. Go ahead and move the light up in the room, and then go ahead and copy it. Copying will not add a new light to your list. Place the light in the back room, like so. You can see here in the light section of the asset editor there is still only one sphere light indicated. And in the components in the main UI we see only one V-Ray sphere light entry. This lets you have multiple lights inside the house but control all their values such as their intensity as if they were just one light. Copy a third light from the original sphere light and place the copy downstairs like so. Copy this light and place that here. Copy another light and place it further in the room so we have now three sphere light copies downstairs so far. Copy yet another and place it further in into the kitchen. This lighting will add a general lighting inside the structure when we render it from the outside. And since these are components, the one listed light will adjust for all the copied lights inside the house. In the Scene section, double-click Scene 3 for this view, and the rest of the house is turned back on. Click Render, and let's see how the scene looks with this general lighting inside. Now, I'll elapse a little time to this result, and we can see that the lighting is dim on the inside. So, expand the Asset Editor to get access to the sphere light controls. Note the sphere light peeking through the window here. Let's get rid of that by opening the Options section and clicking on Invisible for the sphere light. The interactive render will update to remove the visible lights. Now what you see here is a reflection of the sphere light in the glass door. So we will disable Effect Reflections and the reflection will be removed. Click Color to set an amber hue like this for an incandescent light feel. Then set the intensity to 2000 to see how much light we get inside. Now it's a bit much, so knock intensity down to 1800. Now let's get back to lighting the exterior. Stop the interactive render. I'll get the VFB out of our way, and then click the dome light icon, and click in the scene to create a dome light that surrounds the entire scene. The dome light automatically comes into the scene with its own HDRI texture map enabled. 
In the Asset Editor, click the Sunlight and disable it. We will rely on the Domes Light HDR for the outdoor lighting exclusively. Click on Render with V-Ray Interactive icon. You can see as the render resolves that the sky has changed to that of the HDR image, and the lighting is now different as well. Select the dome light and expand the Asset Editor. Increasing the intensity of the dome light will make the scene brighter as you can see here, but go ahead and set it back to 1 when you're satisfied experimenting with this value. Open the options and click to Lock Dome Light. This allows changing the direction of the dome light to affect the direction of the HDR environment map. So, select the dome light and rotate it like so, and then take a look as I elapse time to show the result in the interactive render in the VFB. We see the environment has reoriented in the sky, and the light direction has slightly shifted as well. Stop the interactive render, and in the settings, turn off Material Override, now that we generally have our lighting in place. Select the ground geometry here and click the grass preset icon in the toolbar to quickly add grass to the scene using V-Ray Fur. I'll also add grass to this part of the ground geometry the same way. In the asset editor, click the geometry section to confirm you now have V-Ray Fur added to the scene. Click over to settings and click the arrow below the render with V-Ray interactive icon to access the Render with V-Ray icon for a more final render of the scene. Click the Render icon in the toolbar. I'll elapse just over two minutes of time here to show how the render is resolving to show the grass on the ground and the early evening look of this lighting. And now let's jump into creating a nighttime render of this scene. To focus our efforts and make things a bit faster, turn on Material Override again and in the Geometry section, right-click on the fur to delete them both. In the Light section, disable the Dome Light and re-enable the Sunlight. Start an interactive render with this icon. I'll elapse some time so we can see how the render looks. Expand the Asset Editor for the Sunlight and set the intensity much lower and you'll see nighttime in the VFB. I'll set that value to 0.014 and I'll set the filter color to be a tiny bit purple. And I'll let the render resolve for a little bit. Now let's add some lights to the front of the house. Navigate your view to see this piece of geometry under the overhang. We'll add a mesh light to make this object into an actual V-Ray light. With this object selected, click the mesh light icon in the toolbar. Set your view back to scene 3 again and click the render icon in the toolbar for a new interactive render. I'll elapse a minute or so of time here and you can see this new light a little bit in the render. In the asset editor, click on the sphere light and then right click on its color and choose copy. Click on the mesh light and right click on its color and choose paste to set the same color. Increase the intensity to 350. There is more brightness here in the front of the house, and we can move on to making a more final rendering. Go ahead and stop the interactive render. In the Asset Editor, in the Settings, turn off the Material Override, and then select the first ground geometry and add grass to it. And then select the second ground geometry and add grass to that, just like we did before. Click the arrow below the render icon in the Asset Editor and select the Render with V-Ray icon and then click it to start a production render of the nighttime version of this scene. I'll elapse a couple of minutes here to show this render resolving in the VFB. I can adjust the render easily with the VFB. Click the Show Corrections Control icon here and you'll see several image controls expand out of the VFB. Open Color Balance and click Shadows to control the color of the darks in your render like this to add a little bit of red. You can easily control the highlights and the midtones as well to your liking, as well as exposure and levels to name just but two. When you're happy with your color adjustments and the progressive rendering has reached a satisfactory point, click Stop in the VFB to halt the render and there you have it. Thank you for joining us for this quick start video introducing exterior lighting workflows in V-Ray for SketchUp.